Chart Update 22nd December Data Christmas Special 9 months in and no sign of people waking up or government backing down. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. I've no idea about Christmas elves, but the Christmas trolls are definitely out and about. Dare to do analysis or mention facts, and you're a conspiracy theorist. Believe the government and do no research, and you're rational. Uh huh. Can't think who benefits from that. As befitting a Christmas special, we're going beyond the standard 50. We've coded the saving of chart images to make that less tedious, so we have 147 countries available. There are more than 214 countries available, but only 147 have more than 1 million population and over a thousand cases. Thus we're talking significant countries with every chance of a true and inevitable contagion. Yet as it's long been, the world chose to participate in the original contagion very differently based on regions and it's done so again in the second wave. In the UK we're part of the 1K Club, countries experiencing a thousand deaths per 100 million population. We're a little shy, but close enough. Now here's an interesting thing. The only countries that are in the 1K Club are European and the USA. Does that seem a little strange? Probably not to long-time viewers. Now consider this. The worst hit country in the Far East exceeded 100 normalized deaths for one three-day period peaking at 117 deaths per 100 million. For one brief moment, one country, the Philippines, barely exceeded one-tenth of what the West insists we are going through. As you'll have long understood, the more common figure is that we're experiencing a virus a hundred times more aggressive in the West. So as an observer of a game dominated by the Western power centers, can it get any weirder? As it turns out, it can. To be fair, Brazil did this for three months and the UK and Netherlands, to mention two offhand, have toyed with this before. But take a look at the chart snippets on the left. I've included one wide snippet to include scales, so you can see that we're dealing with log scales increasing from 1, the red line, to 10, 100 and 1000. We're using snippets to focus on one thing, the claimed or reported NP deaths, deaths per 100 million. In this way we can group them and do a bunch at once. Now recalling the humped normal curve, the typical curve of a contagion, what do you notice about this set of second wave chart snippets? Did the laws of physics or contagions change? Is it just me? Or did those contagions decide not to bother coming down? They're the worst hit countries in the world, key players in the 1k club, 1000 NP deaths per day, 40% of 2464 deaths per day standard mortality. And they're just going to hang there. Hell, the government can just not dial a number and sit back till they have the deaths they want. Which is basically how South American countries usurped European countries in the world rankings. Likewise Sweden with its unnaturally flat chart or the UK with its distorted flat decline. It's not entirely novel, but I've never seen it so blatantly horizontal and in sync. So while the Far East shrugs off the virus, the West not only implements a 1K virus, but it doesn't bother making it look natural. Let's race it up to peak and just hold it there. Now those were the usual culprits, a bit disappointed by Switzerland, but who else is in this 1K club and also doing the same? Eastern Europe has joined with a vengeance. Eight European non-EU core countries with the same rush to 1K and the same let's hold it there sideways at peak. I have only one question, what did they get in return? That's 14 European countries, 6 core, doing something very naughty, or it's real, uh-huh. But what about the rest of the 1K club? Here's the core members. Belgium, befitting its role as world number one worst hit, pushed way through 1K, hitting 1,800 deaths normalised per day in its 5-day average, but it's graciously allowed the figure to drop to just below 1K. France and Greece have both allowed drops, while Germany and the US are both climbing up to and just touching 1k. Again, disappointing about Greece, but everyone has a price. 
Naturally, I totally accept that all figures may reflect a true and genuine reality of tragic victims of COVID, and I'll believe that so when I'm given carte blanche to investigate every hospital in the UK and Europe. In the meantime, no surprise that these should be the core agenda players in the second wave. Again, quite a collection in the Me Too Eastern European section of non-peak fraud, though Serbia looks a bit dodgy. Eight more players at 1k. Compared to 27 countries expressing this dramatic second wave, agenda nations all, 46 countries had less than 10 deaths a day, with 31 of those having essentially zero. Nil. None. Not a sausage just the teeniest occasional glimpse. Africa had 21 countries like this, just like just the pale pink dots of occasional daily reports, with no red dots that shows a five-day average where there actually are five days to average, not here. We're limited to about eight per slide, so we'll spare ourselves the other 13 and the copy and paste. You get the idea. Africa brushed this off with absurdly low levels up there with the Far East. The Far East and Australia had its second hump. Stories of fraud there, not my story, so maybe you can check it out. China, New Zealand, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam. No interest. A rare pink dot. Essentially zero. Nor were the zeros restricted to Africa and the Far East. Four countries outside Africa and the Far East managed to have sporadic and very slight reports of deaths. Bravo. Basically what we're seeing is familiar with a twist. Eastern Europe has taken the lead in the second wave, dominating even EU core nations. This is solely the deaths in the last 30 days or 30 days to last data point. It is also stated only the 147 countries with more than 1 million population and 1,000 cases. You cannot explain the absence of COVID in the bottom half by it was inevitable that some escaped. They all had COVID. Meantime, I see that India is distributing a zinc package at $2.50 a pop. Sorry, how much was each shot of the vaccine? Not a big win for Big Pharma in India. Bravo, India. Let's whip through the rest of the world, seeing just how aberrant the West's experience is. Here's more, less than 10 deaths a day, versus 2464 standard deaths a day. Unlike the zeros, so sporadic and low there's no consistent five-day reports and essentially zero deaths, these countries are consistently at a few deaths per day. A few, like less than 10 per 100 million people. Here's a last selection, not quite zero, not consistent either. Just the occasional red dots at less than 10 deaths a day per 100 million people. Where is mainstream media in reporting all this? Naturally, MSM will do the occasional piece on a single country to explain away the unusually excellent results of that aberrant country. No, we're the aberrant countries. Half the world blew this off. What about the 10 to 100 club? 10 is 0.4% of standard deaths, 100 is 4% of standard deaths. Something like that is less than 1 25th of things killing people overall does not strike me as a critical issue. So these are brushed it off as an insignificant but not quite absurdly insignificant issue. We'll do by region and everyone has someone in here. Here's Africa. The Americas showing that you don't have to go the Brazil-Mexico route of massive deaths sustained at peak or near peak levels. What's the story? No idea. Local info needed. Europe and even some core or near core nations have skipped the second wave as crisis scenario. Nice to see Ireland, so loyal in the first contagion, skipping this one at 100 deaths per day. Likewise Norway, doing very nicely. The Far East, naturally, is disinclined to have the second wave to be more than a minor nuisance. 
Lots of zero in the less than 10 category, but a few snuck into the 10 to 100 deaths per day out of 2464 standard deaths per day. And look at the Mediterranean near east, pretty much all here. Not quite as excellent as Far Eastern Africa, but not a material issue. So who's in the honestly at serious category at over 100 deaths, but not quite in the 1K club? In Africa, only South Africa. So here's its full chart, not just a snippet. If you look bottom right, you'll notice I've managed to auto-rank the 147 real countries, real COVID, create a subordinate ranking for Western Core 20 Nations ranking, and do the versus Far East factor, joys of Excel. In the Americas, there's a whole gang shouting, it's bad, it's bad, and somehow they just rushed to peak and stayed there in some cases. Brazil, Mexico were looking at you, but the rest are hardly angels. No fraud there, then. Europe and those countries that didn't make the 1K club have nevertheless shown willing, hitting 100 to 1,000, but not quite 1,000, else they'd be in the 1K club. That's 4% to 40% of standard deaths per day. Here's the Far East nations that made it to the 100 to 1,000 deaths per day. None. Nada. Zip. And in the 1K club, that would be an insult demanding satisfaction. So, yup, 100 deaths per day versus 24 standard is 4% of everyday deaths. And that is the worst it got in the Far East, and that was the Philippines who managed to broach 100 for precisely 3 days in their 5-day average chart. When the worst in the region is 4% of daily standard deaths, and typically it's 0.4% or closer to just 0%, then COVID isn't an issue, and no one in the West thought to make a phone call to ask why. And no, it's not lockdown, which failed beautifully in Australia and New Zealand, with charts as compelling as ours, UK. The differential isn't natural, not in my book, not even close. The Mediterranean and near Asia, except you'll only find med here. Mostly even these are comfortably at the 100 end of 100 to 1000, but Jordan reported a bad peak, ditto Tunisia and Palestine has something going on. I won't accuse the worst hit here of being agenda countries, there's no law that says that some countries can't have a bad result, bad being relative, local knowledge needed. Between the determined to have the worst crisis ever, here's your vaccine West, and the determined to be sensible and get rid of this Far East and Africa, the Mediterranean countries literally sit in the middle. Overall, it's Christmas Day as I prepare this, so I'm not going to linger. You get the idea, not quite a standard update, but to reinforce the same old message, you have to be in the West to be hit hard. Funny that. I may do a standard update or a world tour, all countries no sound, but regardless, thank you for those of you who are still here after all these months. Sadly, as an amateur analyst, ain't no one paying me, which at least means I'm independent. At some point I have to get on with life. We're preparing evidence which we hope may be useful, but the story doesn't change, not even nine months in. Anyone who hasn't bothered to do the research and, and slavishly believes the government and aggressively attacks others for not believing is demonstrating that this is indeed the new religion. How bizarre that before Covid you could guarantee that 50% of people would hate politicians at any one time, depending on whether they were left or right speaking at the time. Now there is only harmony and unity. God bless Brig Brother. If you're sane, aware, depressed, that's sane, then congratulations for being in the minority. Nine months in, with the Great Reset now official, or Build Back Better, the West is steamrollering democracy and independent employment. You're either a super wealthy titan, Google, Amazon et al, or a super in debt nation with the ordinary taxpayers crushed while public sector workers are protected. Clap for nurses? I wouldn't so go, for, go so far as to wish them STDs, but yeah, it'll be a long time, if ever, before I have any time, appreciation or loyalty for people who are secure in their employment and party to this agenda. 
and I say that being married to same, and the stories back up my feelings. We are posting on Facebook and .net. logo is an I am. It's casual, but for the time being, as I prep evidence, the charts and material tended to get posted there. I would never have believed it could really be so bad for so long, and that the people would just roll over, which rather explains both severity and duration. Hopes for Great Awakening are essentially zero, legal initiative slim at best. So right now it's aliens, divine intervention, monoliths, asteroid, thermonuclear war, or a lifetime in a basic income inoculated, chipped, controlled, subservient society. Who would have believed it could come to this? That's it for now. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.